man, we're in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we're over here at Hill Manufacturing and Fabrication. We're gonna go check out a good friend of ours, Mike Payne. You might know him from making chips and seeing him around, but this guy is a legend in the industry. He owns five different manufacturing companies. They have multiple facilities all over. And uh, this is one of them right here. So Hill Manufacturing and Fabrication, let's go check it out. You're gonna walk into a shop, you're gonna see these machines. We want to be mediocre or we want to be great. If I'm going to put my time into a machine, into a part, if I'm going to program something, I'm going to take this thing to greatness. Let's have great customers. Let's give them an experience they've never seen before. Boom! What's up, Mike? What's up, Titan? Man, Oklahoma. This is my first time ever being in Oklahoma. Ever in Oklahoma? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Very nice. Oh, there's the new machine right there. Yeah. There's Oh, you got the dog. So good. You got the dog on the machine. That's a cool thing. So you have actually rescued like 90 dogs. Yeah, so our current dog, Duke, is, uh, I think he's about our 90th rescue um, cool. in like three years. So we just Very always cool. have a rescue dog. Um, it's become a huge part of our, who we are, so it's That's like part good. of our branding now, too. Awesome, man. Yeah, no, I, I love that. So one of the cool things is, as you guys know, we distribute uh, CNC machines. So we actually sold Hill Manufacturing this Emco right here. And then Jesse's up here training them on the machine. And uh, we just came up here to uh, do a tour and, and make a cool video. And uh, it's a crazy partnership. So every month we have in-house training. So different people that we partner with and who purchase machines from us, every month they come in, they get training on, on controls, cam, on whatever they need. We just keep pouring into our community of machinists, helping them thrive in the industry. But nice U-Mill 750. So this, this bad boy would be a little bit bigger than the 630 that we actually have on R4. And this thing cuts the material. It hogs, man, hogs. So this is one of your manufacturing plants. Correct. So how many total, how many total buildings do you guys have? Four. And then how many total companies? Five. That's awesome, man. Hey, is, is all of the companies in Oklahoma or you have other ones? Right also? now, everything's in Oklahoma. Nice. I mean, I, I'm looking to probably branch out regionally maybe in states that are touching Oklahoma. And then you guys are, you just purchase different companies so you can be a, you know, one source, you know, do everything. You know, what we're generally looking for is like a diversification in either industry, customer, or capability, right? Okay. So the last shop I bought a couple months ago, that's about an hour from here. We probably, Hill would traditionally like no quote about 80% of their parts because yeah. they're too small. Okay. They would traditionally no quote about 80% of our parts because they're too big. So then together you guys work. Together we're covering everything now from a quarter inch all the way up to, you know, 36 inch. So we actually still have a full manual shop. We've got, I think, six or seven manual machines over here. Of course, they're mostly used for some of our internal tooling. And as we kind of come into this part of the shop, we, we kind of we're in a lot of our lathes. So we have 63 total spindles, and I would say about 60% about lathes and 40% mills, something sure. like that. You know, when I bought the company eight years ago, it was almost exclusively like uh, DMG Mori equipment. You know, some newer, some older. But there's, you know, there's so much like productivity gains you can get just doing, you know, like your tooling and work holding, like the stuff that you show, like with the Kinemetal and the, the AME and all that. that um, a lot of that's been really helpful to us because mm -hmm. 63 spindles is a lot of capital investment to, yeah. to start trying to, to deal with. Yeah. And I think, I think that's like one of the things a lot of people miss is they look at, oh, I got, I got these machines and they're filled up and I need to get more spindles, more spindles, instead of you know, looking at the efficiencies of the machines and figuring out like, is every single tool path at its most efficient? Right. You know, yep. is it, how are we running? Are we running as fast as we can? while maintaining tool life and all of that. We use a real simple formula. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, like when we look at how many parts we're producing and so forth to just decide like, is this investment in a tooling or work holding or whatever yeah. worth making? And nine times out of 10, it is. Right. You know what I mean? Good, my yeah. man. This, this is, is so looking good. great. Stop looking. Oh my God. It looks, not that it didn't look great before, but it is dialed. 
Yeah, we uh, dial. We, we we tried to look good for you. Hell yes! No, <laughs> this is wonderful. Look at all these nice little things for all your jaws. Yeah, I yeah. hadn't seen that before. Doing all right. Or, sorry, or, <laughs> so Dingo's he has been so good about adopting. Like he became our robot wrangler, right? I mean, like he just immediately figured out, got to go. Didn't didn't do the whole fight of you know automation is taking my job or anything. He was embraced it. He asks me every day when we're getting a new one. And then that's what people need to do. Like workers, you know, everybody's trying to find their place. Figure out something that nobody knows how to do and own that and make that efficient and you become more valuable to the employer, you know? Everybody wants to complain about running hard materials and hard parts and I'm like, you should embrace it. Hey, if the future's going this way, I can't stay in the past. You gotta yep. keep going with it. Nice to meet you, man. Nice meeting you, brother. Where, where did you actually purchase that machine right there? From you. Oh man, from <laughs> us. Yeah. Really? And yeah, and you, you guys are like kicking butt on the speeds and feeds. And Absolutely. Yeah. Crazy no, rigid. Making it happen. Yeah, we need Steven over here to, but he's been, uh, he's just owned it and uh, yeah, figured it out. You know, coming down doing some training with you guys a couple weeks yeah, ago. And, 100%. And uh, yeah, it's got it all dialed in. That's awesome, man. It looks great. So my favorite thing I've found about it so far yeah. is. When you go into a drilling cycle or a tapping cycle, you've got your TA3 or TA4, rather than having to think about a Z number, a Q number, a R for where you're wrapping yep. it to, it gives you a little graphic and you can just change everything right there. Right there, that's nice. Super cool. You don't really, you don't have to know your G-code so well. Yeah, yeah, it'll you know, give it, it to you. It breaks it all down right there. Love it. When you look at the business model of one, yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to, I mean, we clearly have a great quality machine, good control. The guys have been ripping chips for yeah. two weeks on it now. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, at, the, at that price point, I mean, it, it can support our growth and, and make it very manageable without having to, you know, take out these huge capital break, investment loans break the bank. and break the bank. Yeah, you know, and that's what's neat. You know, when you go to the fourth axis and the probing, and even if you want to add high pressure coolant, it's still very reasonable, very, under very reasonable. 70 grand, right. you know, so, for a you know 30 by 20 machine and everything you get 12k spindle 24 tools see and the neat thing is you know we sell a lot of the uh i think we're at like 154 c uh styles total now ship and you know you're probably the exception a lot of these are in guys garage you, you know totally see it you got about the 154 i'd say 50 are in industry and about 100 in garages yeah. guys that just want to do extra work at night or guys that are hey you know what I, I've got some overflow at work I'm gonna bring a machine right. into the garage and, and make it happen well yeah I mean for it to be a good you know from a starter machine to a production machine you I got guess. it yeah you I got couldn't it. be happier yeah yeah good on you yeah heck yeah <laughs> A total of five horizontals we've got three right here you know i think that was probably a, maybe the earliest form of some of the automation that, that hill had years ago um, just with using the pallet systems and so forth we've done a lot in, in improving that you know we've, we're using some of the the hennig tombstones now the amy tombstones now and um, you know just like we were talking earlier just improving what we're already doing we used to do a lot of one part at a time and now you know i think caleb right now i think he's you know running six at a time right We'll go over here so these are our these are our big lays so 20 inch chuck we can turn up to about 24 24 and a half inches very nice and then of course the heart of the shop is the inspection department right if we don't have good inspection we don't have a shop so go in here daniel's in here you've met daniel before yeah so daniel's he's taking over inspection and really just our on floor process monitoring so like we were talking about mm -hmm. making sure a job's running well right out of the gate like Daniel's paying attention to that and catching those things and able to bring them to the attention of everybody else to go fix it, right? Whether yeah. we need to reprogram something, we need to change the way we're doing our work holding, the tooling we're using, whatever it is. Daniel's on top of that and making sure that we're we're staying on budget, we got good parts, uh, staying on schedule and so forth. You can, you can have all the fancy machines in the world, man. I'll spend all the money, but if it can't pass inspection, you ain't got nothing. That's right. 
you know, just takes such a good eye and it mm -hmm. takes a certain personality to be inspection, right? Like yeah. the, I've had inspectors that were pushovers yeah. and, and they could be convinced the part was good, even though the numbers right. were telling them something different. Yeah. And it takes a great owner to actually give the respect to the inspection department and to make sure that all of the employees understand that that's that's the final say right there. Not not you, right? But him, you know. And if it's not signed off, it's not running. Well, you've got to give him Make the authority parts. to say stop. Exactly. Right. Like he has to be able to tell a job. Exactly. Stop. We're not making good parts. Hence, traffic cop. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> He's the traffic cop. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's look at new tooling and new processes. You guys have all the tools here. It's just about leveling up and be who you were created to be. Yeah, you have a beautiful facility. Thank you. Uh, you got wonderful people. Like the culture here is amazing. And uh, so when you look at different, like having multiple shops, how do you how do you keep the culture like just perfected? Like your culture, what yeah. you believe in, like what you stand for. How do you keep it through all shops? So I, you know, what I found the biggest thing is. There's elements that I want consistency across all our shops, like how we treat our people, um, you know, certain, you know, again, our processes so that we deliver the same promise to our customers every time. Yeah. But they also need to have their own individuality, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, some of them do cookhouse on Fridays. Yeah. Some don't. You know, I mean, it, it all varies. And yeah. so we let, you know, we, we want them to have a little bit of that individualism. Cool. I remember too. seeing the other young guy that is a leader at another yeah. company and you train him here to go over there. Justin's a great example, and it's what we're trying to do with all our people is get them in the best environment for them, yeah. right? And, and the people that are that have earned that opportunity to grow and new opportunities, we want to provide that for them. And it may be in this building, it may be in another building. It's still all in one family, right? Very cool. and, and you got to meet that whole entire yeah. family today. Um, but that's important. And, you know, so the same way we look at like a customer's parts, right? I want to run the parts where they run the best. So whether it's on the best equipment for that type of part, whether it's because of the right type of machinist, whatever that might be. Same thing with people. I want to be able to put the best people in the yeah. best environment too. And then they excel. Each shop kind of has a different mix too. We have some shops that like the shop Justin runs, they're, mm -hmm. they're a lot better at like higher quantity production runs. Mm -hmm. Hill's a lot better at, at uh, more difficult, high precision, um, you know, a lot of prototype work, bigger parts, stuff like that. So different people, different machines, different needs, yeah. you know, kind of fall into all those categories. So when we talk about buying additional shops, all of that's in some form of diversification, right? Yeah. I mean, we talk about diversification, I think most people immediately go to industry, mm -hmm. and um, which is a huge thing, in yeah. you know, but um, but no, I mean, even just the, 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 the environment, the culture, the types of clients, the types of work, mm -hmm. um, and types it gives of materials, size of the parts. types of materials. Yeah, we yeah. got one Industry. shop that runs, you know, mostly aluminum. Yeah. We got other shops that never see aluminum, yeah. right? And and it's also nice with the different mixes of work. We really have a lot of opportunity to train people because we have parts that are super easy, and we can take somebody that's never run a machine. We can get them started pushing a button. Then we can teach them how to change inserts and change some offsets. And then, you know, next thing you know, a couple of years later, they're running some of the most difficult parts of plus or Very minus cool. two tenths. So we've got hill manufacturing, we've got DGP manufacturing. Okay. Then we've got MPPI. Nice. And then we've got QMI. Nice. And uh, yeah, all awesome teams. Shout there. out to all everyone out there. Yeah, they're all uh, so good. they're all great guys. We've got a, yeah. we've got a really great team, and I appreciate today you even mentoring a few of them that kind of no reached problem. out to you hey. individually so it's manufacturing man yep i love it that's it's what's super great good. about the community yep. thanks for having me thanks buddy boom so good oh man look at that well you gotta love the titans of cnc up there right next to the great american flag boom manufacturing baby